Athena is with Catalyst, which is one of our sponsors, so thank you so much. And we really look forward to hearing about Mahara and the way that we can use it as well practitioners with our students. So thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Thank you very much also for having me, and it's been a fantastic day and a half already here on Wahiki Island with you all. And um, I particularly like it because the topics are very similar, and we've already touched on a number of things prior, um, namely reflections and also what can you do with alumni when, or when graduates leave your organizations. And so I'm hoping to give you a little bit of insight and kind of just let you know portfolios are there to help you for with it and see if you might be interested, if you haven't already worked with portfolios, if that is something that you might want to explore. And of course, because I work for Catalyst IT in Wellington, um, I'm talking primarily about Mahara, but a number of the things that we are talking about and looking at during the presentation are actually also applicable to other ePortfolio systems. Um, but my experience comes from Mahara. I've been working with it, I realized this year, for 10 years because I started with it at the University of Luxembourg where we introduced it in a Bachelor in Educational Sciences, educating this um, future primary, schools, uh, primary school teachers in Luxembourg. And we needed a new e-portfolio system kind of going away from a shared network drive where people always could only upload files, download them, then every teacher had all these lots of files on their computers and there was not really any connection between the files. And so the professor that I was working for said, well, let's find a different e-portfolio system. And that's when I came across Mahara, which was actually developed here in New Zealand initially. <coughs> it um, is a software that started at, in the university sector and also with other tertiaries like Open Poly because the learning management wasn't enough anymore. The learning management allowed teachers to upload content, ask students to get assignments, but there was no space for the students themselves to keep track of their learning and to keep all the things that are important for them during their learning process. And that's where they came up with the idea of creating Mahara as a personal learning environment. And that's where our background comes from. So not from an assessment tool, but more from the lifelong learning perspective, allowing students to be in the center of the learning process and really decide for themselves what they want to share with whom, and also how they want to share that. So it's not automatically that every lecturer or also internship director has access to the portfolio of the students. They decide that themselves. But before you kind of look into a, a few aspects of Mahara, um, I'd like to go very briefly into what, what it is to work with portfolios. Um, who of you actually has worked with portfolios with students, maybe also for yourself as part of registration? That's a good number, almost half of it. That is fantastic. And um, since some of you already have experience with it, others probably have heard about it, uh, there's a lot around portfolios that does need to be looked into because it's not just one additional activity that can be slapped onto a course. It does require changes in pedagogical thinking and changes in the kind of activities that can be given. And so the concept of folio thinking comes and plays into that. Because working with portfolios is a process of engaging in the collection, organization, reflection, and connection that leads to a person's ability to speak intelligently and also concisely about one's learning experiences, what they mean and their value, and how the experiences relate to one and each other. And so, the, the term storytelling is already mentioned in there because the students tell their own stories. And that is a quote um, by Vicky Sutra who has worked with Helen Chen and a lot of other researchers in particular in the United States. So let's <coughs> unpack this definition a little bit. I'm not starting with a collection because bef before we can actually collect something, we need to create something. So the students create content. The students are out at an internship, for example. They have experiences and they record them in videos or in, with images or also in, in text form. And that is the evidence of their learning. Then, of course, they collect all that. And we use the ePortfolio to collect all that in order to give them a space where they can put all their things. 
So they can take as many pictures as they like, as many videos as they like, and have them available, have them collected. Because only once they've got the data, like kind of with the survey that was had, you need to have the data first in order to then analyze it and to look at it. So we, the students need to collect all their learning evidence first in order to then actually look at it critically, and that's where the reflective element comes in, and decide what they actually want to have in their portfolio, what they want to keep. And that's where it is important to know why they are keeping a portfolio. Is it for registration purposes? That is more an assessment portfolio. Is it to showcase their skills? So if they want to apply for a job, apply for an internship, those portfolios can look very different. Or is it a portfolio to, um, to document the professional development that they have gone through? Or for you as lecturers that you've gone through? Those are all very different portfolios. But you can use the entire corpus of the learning evidence that you have in order to create those different portfolios. So the curation is important because we can't just give a, give a lecturer our entire learning evidence, just a shoebox full, and say, here it is. But we need to also tell them why we think it is important what is in the shoebox. We need to let them know why it is important for us, so for the people creating portfolios. And so you reflect on the learning. And because we are social beings, the reflection is not just of our own, but we also have conversations with others around it. Um, because through the feedback that we receive from others, we also improve our learning and we gain more insight, maybe even realize all the good things we've already done. Realize, oh, this could have done better, but get insight of how we could change things around. And so those four things, I think, I call them the four C's, for me are very important in portfolio work. The creation of the evidence, the collection of it, the curation around it, and then the conversations that, conversations that we have in it. At Sotel, just a couple of months ago in Auckland, um, we kind of discovered a fifth C that still needs a bit of thinking around it, and that could be collaboration. Because a portfolio does not have to be a single person's portfolio. You can create group portfolios. And Cranfield University, in particular Sam Taylor and Aurelie Sogier, they have done very, very great work around that, working with their students, creating group portfolios, sharing knowledge, creating shared understanding, and then presenting that all in a portfolio. So it does not have to be the work of a single student. And here's just a very brief example, and I'll make the slides available so that you can take a look at them more easily. But if we look at this one, this is um, Teresa McKinnon's CMOLT application and review in this case. Um, she does all those things in her reflection. She says, the point at which I realized. So she has that experience. She revisited things. So she goes back into her collection, um, into all her learning evidence, and then curates it. She gets feedback and mentoring from her peers. And so she has conversations around her learning evidence. And the curation is, it's a highlight. She does not tell about all her experiences in her portfolio, but she highlights certain things. And that is just by going through one page of her portfolio and looking at the text uh, um, that she has written for her application. And you're very welcome to look at that more closely afterwards. But one of the things that I'd like to look at right now is the other part of the portfolio work. Um, while we've said that Mahara is there for primarily as personal learning environment, the needs of um, universities in particular and also registration boards is such that there needs to be some sort of assessment. Oftentimes we can't get around the assessment aspect. But we didn't want to make assessment like in the learning management system that students take a test and then they get graded on it, but rather have something that also reflects the portfolio work and works really well in that context. So still work with feedback and um, have the reflections of the students. And that's where the University of Canberra comes in with its project of smart evidence that we were involved in in the scoping activity and then um, at Catalyst we developed it. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well due to the lights, but this is an evidence map 
as some of you might have already seen it in the past on this sheet of paper, you have a table, and then you have um, rows or columns for your evidence, and in the rows you have the individual standards represented, and then you just make it a tick box or check mark, put it into a row if you think you have um, accomplished a certain standard. And now we transform that online. And the nice thing is because we have it online, we are not limited by uh, check marks, but we can be more explicit. So if you hover over the standards themselves, you get the descriptions. You don't need to hunt down a PDF anymore. And then you're not just placing a tick box here, but you're also putting a reflection on it. Why you think that a particular portfolio page that contains the evidence matches a, a standard. And then you can't just have a tick uh, that an assessor might take a look at, but they can also leave feedback and also tell you whether the evidence that has been showcased has already met the entire standard or if there's more that needs to be done. And so to just briefly go through that, when somebody takes or has their evidence on a portfolio page, they can then go to the map and say, okay, this portfolio page needs to, um, or shows evidence for the treaty uh, partnership. Then they click the item and they need to put in an annotation. So it's kind of a meta reflection. So students can reflect on their evidence themselves. Then they can get feedback on that. They can also have reflective journals. But in this case, we want to have the connection specifically between that particular portfolio page and the standard. So that might be very different from what they reflect on a day-to-day um, -day basis. So they have the standard here. They also have the descriptors again down here. So again, no need for looking uh, up anything online or on a printout. And then the icon changes. So when the assessor gets to it, they immediately see, okay, student has made the connection to this standard. They don't need to look at this portfolio page for the uh, third standard because there's nothing there. So it also the evidence map, the visualization helps to make that process fast for students and also lecturers in order to know where they are at in the competency framework, what have they already done, and where do they still need a bit more work. Once it's ready for assessment, a lecturer can go in and do the assessment. So they take a look at the evidence on the portfolio page and then they go into the annotation and select whether it meets the criterion, partially meets it or fully meets it or doesn't meet it. And they can also leave feedback because again, it shouldn't just be a multiple choice activity, but it should help the learning of the student. So there needs to be some sort of feedback given in order for the student to actually know why did I get any of these three um, assessments. Gets the feedback. And then on the map itself, it is represented through different icons. And this works in any language, because it can be translated. We have the um, standards for the teaching profession, for example, fully in Tere Omari. Uh, it works in French, works in Japanese, any language that you can think of. And also the criteria and the assessment statuses can also be translated so that it fully meets the requirements of a particular standard and isn't just something generic there. So this is a way of how assessment can be done. The nice thing is also that students can do that as self-assessment. So if you save the same framework and just say that it should be a self-assessment framework, then the students can do the assessments themselves and um, lecturers can go back and still give feedback on it, but it is more a self-directed learning activity there for the students to even have more control over it. And also in some cases, there is never an external assessment and therefore students can still fill in the map and therefore know where they are at in their learning process towards registration or towards any of the assessments that they have going on. So that was just a very brief look at smart evidence. And since we've talked about alumni yesterday very uh, quite extensively in the afternoon, I thought I'd also get a word out for, um, for the ePortfolio and alumni. Because I think the portfolio platform can be a very good tool to keep your alumni close. 
especially if you allow your alumni to keep their portfolios on the platform and don't just delete them once they've graduated and lost access to the learning management system. Because if the alumni are already on the environment, they oftentimes use it for employability purposes. So graduates getting their first job, they show what they have done in their studies. And that learning evidence is in the portfolio. Um, additionally, if you keep them on the platform, you can easily send them a message and ask them if they want to mentor a student or look over um, a student's application for an internship or do something in the area where they are. And then, of course, also if the alumni update their portfolios over time, then you have immediate access or you can have access to that and can stay in touch with them in order not having to find them somewhere on LinkedIn or on Facebook or on other social media that not everybody is happy to use due to privacy reasons and others. And so that would be on an institutional instance that you're happy with in regards also to terms and conditions and privacy statements. And so the students would still be there. They would also still be part of the university or the polytechnic because they are still on the system. Your branding is on there and therefore it's kind of closer relationship. And students can also set up groups or the alumni organization can set up groups in Mahara, for example, so that there can be discussions going on around um, things that interest them that they would like to see as graduates that can then impact again how career services works with them or what you can also do in regards to will. So there are possibilities to keep alumni close without having to send them out and trying to reel them back in after graduation. And maybe that is something that would be good to give it a go more and more. Um, there are certainly a, a large number of universities that do look into have giving alumni accounts for their portfolios and keeping them on the system so that the graduates can also take advantage of using the portfolio that they've created in their careers. Because oftentimes when we have teachers, then um, they do have their teach or they do the teacher registration as students started, and then they want to continue with that um, in their profession. So they can take advantage of having the portfolio there. Or nurses in New Zealand, um, Unitech, um, AUT, and in particular, have been working with Mahara quite extensively over the last few years with the nursing students, Massey University as well. And um, therefore, the students have built up their portfolios. And now they go to the DHBs, where Mahara is also used, or they decide to join the College of Nurses and can use nurse portfolio. And then they already have the foundation for their portfolios available and don't have to start from scratch. But they are also used, A, to the technology, and B, also to the process of reflecting and to the process of building a portfolio. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I'm still here until tomorrow and then also available um, online or in person in Wellington or other, in other places. Thank you. <laughs>